Hi, George here. Let's take a look at how you can crop a photo inside of Affinity Photo. This is Affinity Photo 2.6. And the reason why you would want to crop a photo is to either remove background stuff that you don't want to have in your image, zoom in on your picture a little bit, or you want to change the focus of the image and bring it in tighter to your subject. Now the crop tool is over here, left-hand side, it's right there. Bring that up. And it comes in with these crop marks at the outside here of your image. And then up here, we have the options for the crop tool. Starting left-hand side, there are some basic presets in here. Let's see, I wanted to make this into a five by four. Click on that, and it crops it into a five by four ratio. I'll do the Control Z to undo that, so you can easily come in here and get specific ratios. These are common ratios, and then down below here, we have photo ratios. Let's say I wanted to print this out on an eight by 10 page. There you go. Now notice here that it's a bit larger than my image, so I want to crop this in. You can just grab a corner, and pull that down until you get rid of that extra space in there. And that retains the eight by 10 ratio. Okay, control Z to back out of that. We also have ISO paper sizes in here. That's European, US paper sizes, cinema sizes right down here, and screen sizes if you want to crop for use on the internet. Next to that, we have options over here for unconstrained original ratio and custom ratio. All of these crops over here, these are all custom ratios. I'll normally use unconstrained up here unless I have a specific size I want to go for. This gives you the ratio of the image when it's been cropped. You can see that if I go over here, let's just choose a four by three. Notice how that size changes in here. Okay, control Z to deselect that. You can also type in a specific size if you want to. Here's our dots per inch right here. This is based upon the resolution of the current image. Here is the crop, so if I pull this down, See how that crop changes in there? It's basically the same as what we have over here, except that this is just a reference telling me what it is, or is I can actually change it over here, left-hand side. We also can rotate the image in here. Click on Rotate. It spins it around by 90 degrees. So you have that option. And you can straighten as well. This one's kind of neat. I'll just do Control-Z back up a couple of steps here. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this. Right-click, and let's duplicate that layer. Hide the background. This now is unlocked. Just come down here to rotate. And I'm just going to spin the image a bit like that. Kind of center it. There we go. So if you have an image that's not straight, you can straighten the image out. That's also in the crop tool. It's right here. It says straighten. And notice how you get this different cursor in here. What you want to do is take something which is level. And I think the water line right here, right against the edge of that bank. So I'm going to click and drag a line straight across like that. You then let go. Affinity Photo goes in and rotates the image based upon that line. Now, obviously, you can see here it was not quite right. Probably one side of this is closer to the viewer than the other side, so it's not quite exactly level, but it's awfully darn close. Just go back here. I'll try with a line on the dock. Back to straighten. We'll see how this does. I'm going to pull a line right across that dock. Let go. There we go. And that, again, straightens it out, but keeps the same area that was visible. Okay, Control-Z to back out of all of that. And back to our crop tool. And when you're cropping in, to set this to original ratio right here. And if I'm cropping in like this, it's sometimes nice to have some reference in here as to what's going to be included in the crop or where it's going to be sitting on the page. And you have some reference tools up here where it says overlay. We have none, a thirds grid. Kind of helps you decide where things are sitting. There's also a phi grid. The phi grid notes that the middle part here is skinnier than the outer parts. It just helps you really focus in on the center area of the picture if you want to do that. In this case, that's not really that important. There's a golden spiral. This is occasionally useful if you are working towards a focal point over here somewhere, left-hand side of the screen. You can then adjust that to fit. And there's also diagonals. Now, the diagonals are useful if you have two things you want to have in your picture evenly spaced. So you place one over in here somewhere, see where it's sitting on the diagonal, and have your other one over here equal distance. So again, just reference tools. You don't have to use those. It's up to you, but they are here as well. Now, notice how outside of this, there is a darker area. That's the part that's going to be cropped out. You can choose to darken that or not. That's up to you. And the reveal shows your boundaries of what's going to be cropped out in there. You can also reset back to your basic setting. So as you can see, pretty easy to use, but you can do more than that. There is another way to do your crops. Let's say I have my rectangular marquee tool. Make sure we're set on a new selection. There we go. And I know I want to crop in about like this. So there's my basic crop. You can, of course, move this around a bit. 
but this is a selection and not a crop. Easy to handle. Just go back over here to the crop tool and it automatically becomes a crop. Control Z to back out of that. Also, this is very interesting. Come down here to the freehand selection tool. Let's say I know that I want to have my photograph including this part of the image like that. So I'll make a selection around that. There we go. And I want it cropped in around this selection. Same exact thing. Go up here to the crop tool and it gives you a crop right at the edges of that selection. I then can come back in and adjust it if I want to, just kind of tweak that. But it gives me a great starting point that includes that initial selection. Control D to deselect and there's that crop. And when you're happy with your cropped area, all you have to do is go up to your left-hand side, hit that apply button, and it then crops the image in at that setting. Now this isn't cropped on a layer. I can show you that right over here. If I hide our new copy up here, we're now looking at the background. So it's cropping the whole file, all layers included. It's not cropping just one layer. Very easy to use, as you can see, and real nice if you wanted to come in and just get a little bit tighter on your subject where you want to correct some basic things such as a slanted image, stuff like that. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Affinity Photo, I have a complete training course for this. It covers everything, all the tools, all the menus, all the panels, everything, including all of the different personas up here. And I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll see you next time.